it was tough because as a teacher, the day before we shut down, um, I was asked to last minute help put together packets for the students, survey students running around, not knowing what was going on, not really knowing the severity of, of what was going on. It was a shock. It was a lot of anxiety. And I did have to quarantine because it turns out that one of um, someone at my in my building um, was diagnosed with COVID. But I was filled with anxiety at first. And I had also been spending quiet time with God. I had, I've, I've been doing that for a few years as, as well, but I felt like I wasn't really listening. And this really made me stop and listen. I didn't like the feeling that I had in my heart. I didn't like that I didn't know what was going to happen, yet I knew that I had to trust God because I know of all the things that he's done to, for me before. I just had to stop, be still, and really listen when I, when I did my quiet time. And it took a while for the anxiety to go away little by little. Spending quiet time was also, what I would hear from him is to continue to reach out to, to my people, my girls, my family, my core. And those are my ladies in my life group and some of the people from Skyland that have become my family, like Robert and Diane and Logan. It was tough trying to um, teach as a, at the same time as helping my children learn. And there were times that I just wanted to give up on everything. But because I have Diane, Robert, my girls from Life Group, you know, Andy, Diane Lampman, um, Mary Lou, Joe, Erica, Lori, all these people, you know, that are family and that at any point I could just reach out, whether it was a text, whether it's a call, whether it's a Zoom, whether it's just requesting pray for me. We're still in it. I'm handling it differently. I do have close family members who have been affected by this seriously. A couple of people who passed away dear to me and one specific member who um, was in the hospital for four months. That really scared me because I didn't know what to do other than pray. I had to figure out what my balance was and how do I take care of myself and my kids and do I live in fear? I had to do something and I know that God takes care of me because I've lived it. So it's either stop and do what he tells you or continue to live in fear. And how I, yes, I did hear him. There's a little spot in my kitchen. I have a very small apartment, but I have my one spot where the sun always comes in. I try to wake up early before my kids wake up. And as I would sit and do my quiet time, the sun would come up. That would fill me with light, you know? Another thing that I, love to do is listen to worship music. We listen to it all the time at home. And one of the ways that I heard him speaking to me was when I would hear my kids singing on their own, especially my daughter. I love just watching her because she'll be doing something and she'll just break into song. And usually it's worship because that's what we listen to. Or even my son who is fierce and who is strong-willed. He's such a smart boy but he, and he's such a loving boy, but he is hard. <laughs> hard-headed sometimes and it's hard for me but he would just out of nowhere come and hug me and say I love you mom which he always did but it was different because I knew that I know they were also going through a lot and I hear a lot of oh we live in a broken world and it's true we do but what I heard was that you know I'll take care of you trust me and this is something that I've heard for years even when I was going through the divorce and, and the separation and stuff the one thing that kept me going was his word were his words trust me and I've learned to trust him. And it's not perfect. I still, you know, sometimes, especially now that things are kind of coming back up again, I have had to take a step back and see, okay, where, what is my role here? How much is it my responsibility to take care of myself for my children? My, my children are my mission. And I've said that many, many times before. I had to change some things in my heart and the way I communicate with them because I had to think about what they were going through and what they're experiencing, trusting in him trusting that he's my dad and he, he, that he's taking care of me. Even though the world seems to be falling apart on the outside, he's taking care of me.